if you are sort of wrestling with this, I'm actually kind of okay with that because this is a part of mathematics that we have not touched for quite some time. If that part of your brain is just like full of cobwebs and you're like, blow the dust off, you're like, uh, nothing's there, okay? That's actually kind of why we're doing it. Let's have a go. Can someone tell me, and by the way, you won't see any degree symbols here, so hand me an answer in radians, please. Can anyone tell me what alpha plus beta is actually equal to? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Pi over two. Pi over two is the correct answer. Now, if you're like, mm, where did that come from? 90 degrees, if that's where your brain feels more comfortable. Let's think about some of what we know about the fact that this is a circle and therefore what can we infer from it, okay? And we're really going real basic, like back to year seven almost, okay? This is a circle, okay? So being that this point here is marked in, which means it's the center of the circle, what can you tell me about these one, two, three intervals coming from the center? What can you tell me about them? They're all, they're all equal, they're radii, aren't they? So maybe if you haven't already, go ahead and mark that in onto your diagram, okay? Now because these are equal radii, the triangles, like the sub-triangles inside this triangle, so there's a, like a triangle here, like a flat looking one, and then this one over here in the top right hand corner, because they've got radii forming the sides there, what can you tell me about the triangles? They're, say it again, they're isosceles, thank you so much. So you've got equal sides here, equal sides here, um, equal sides are opposite equal angles, or you might have said the base angle or base angles of a, an isosceles triangle are equal, okay? Um, I prefer equal sides opposite equal angles because you don't even need to say, you don't even need to prove that it's isosceles, you can just skip that logic altogether. So if there are equal angles opposite equal sides, this angle up here, what's that? This one, this small, this thin one, this is alpha as well, isn't it? Right, because these two are opposite equal sides. And then up in this triangle, you've got, that's, that's beta, right? Beta, beta, whichever you prefer, okay? Now, at this point, where can my reasoning go? Well, there's a bigger triangle. I talked about these sub-triangles, right? There's a bigger triangle that's inscribed within this circle. And you know all of the angles at all the vertices of this bigger triangle, right? If you were to add up, all of the angles, there's three of them, right? What would you get? 180. Um, you should get 180 degrees, because it's a triangle. Um, I'm thinking in radians mode, so pi radians. So that would be what it's all equal to. But if I actually go around and take the angles that have been presented here, then you've got two alphas, you've got two betas, and to get to the result that uh, we had Calvin give us before, we just have to divide both sides by two, and that gives you pi over two. Is that okay? Does it make sense? So, like I said, a um, bit of thinking about sides, triangles, angles, and we're there. Please file that away in the back of your mind. We're going to return to it shortly. Rule it off. Leave space for a heading. I'll give it to you in due time. And I'd like you to write down the following equation underneath your empty heading. Here it comes. Argument of uh, what have I got here? Z take away three, Z take away one equals Pi on two. All right. Now, as before, I just want to sort of gauge um, how many of you, don't tell me or don't shout out, don't spoil it, how many of you looking at this equation have some sense, any sense at all, of what kind of graph we might draw on the basis of this equation? Any takers? I just want to see a show of hands if you've got some familiarity. One? Anyone else? Oh, delightful. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do, right? Um, we're going to explore, and this is why I left the heading empty, right? We're going to explore what shape you get out of this. And it is a shape you're familiar with, but because we are in complex numbers land, we're going to do some really cool things with it. All right, so here's what we're going to do first. When you have uh, two complex numbers, in this case, z minus 3 and z minus 1, when you divide two complex numbers, one by the other, what happens to the arguments? We, we subtract the arguments, don't you? Um, we usually think about it in reverse. When you multiply, multiply two complex numbers, we add the arguments. Well, this is just the same thing in reverse. Do you agree? So what I can do is I can start to write this in a simpler form. I can tease it out a little bit by saying, well, the argument of that first complex number, if you subtract the argument of the second complex number, you'll end up with the argument of the, the quotient. What happens when you divide? Are you okay with that? 
That so far so good? OK, great. So this is an alternative way to write the same thing. But what does this mean? OK, have a think about this with me. There's some complex number z. It can sort of like fly around the complex plane. But I want it to be in exactly the place where if you measure the angle from 3, we think about this from examples last week, right? From 3 to our complex number z, and you take the difference with the angle measured from 1 to the same complex number, apparently we want that difference to be pi on 2. There are some points on the complex plane where if you measure from here, measure from here, take the difference, you'll get this result. Now, that's a heck of a lot to keep in your mind. So on your laptop, go ahead, open it up. What I'd like you to do is go to the bottom of the page on Canvas. And you should find a Desmos activity link that will take you to look to something that looks roughly like this. Not exactly, but pretty close. OK? Now, as you're opening this up, right, I want you to think about what does this mean? How can we understand what's going on in terms of this equation? OK? Argument of z minus 3. What does that mean? Um, I'm, I'm calling our, our movable z point, I'm calling it p up the top there, so it's, it's in purple over there. Okay? So I can move this around, and so can you. You can just put it anywhere you like. Okay? Um, now, the thing I want you to get, a, want to get across to you right, is I'm trying to measure some angles. Right? I've put some protractors onto here so you can see what's going on. So for example, if I just look over here at this side here, if I put p at somewhere like, let's put it there. Have a look at the argument of z minus 3. It's an obtuse angle. We measure from the positive, real, positive direction of the real axis, right? And then we measure anti-clockwise. I know it's a bit small, but can you read the angle off there? Have a think. It's from the positive side, right? So it's an obtuse angle you should be getting, right? This is, this is 130 degrees, right? I, I couldn't find a protractor in radians, so we're just going to have to deal with degrees for a little bit, OK? So that's 130. And then if I come over to my other protractor, uh, it's, it's closer. I'll, I'll, I'll adjust it a little bit so it's closer to something precise. Uh, let's put it there. OK, so I've got argument of z minus 1 over here on the left-hand side. Just reading the protractor, what's that angle? That's uh, pi on 3, thank you. That's 60 degrees, right? Now I've got both in degrees. So here, if I were to take the difference, that's, that's this, right? One angle take away the other. What did we say? It was 130 take away 60. So what would be the difference in this case? That's 70 degrees, right? Is that pi on 2? No, it is not. So this particular point that I've chosen doesn't satisfy the equation. But if you go ahead, you can find points that do, right? For example, let me just uh, move this down a little bit. I'm going to try and put it about... That should do it. Have a look at the angles I've chosen this time. And maybe you've chosen something similar, right? What have I got over here? I've got 140 on the right-hand angle. And I've got 50 on the left-hand angle. Is that OK? So 140, take away 50. Bam, bam, I've got 90 degrees. That's pi on 2 radians. So you're like, ooh. Whatever that spot is, that's one of the spots, the one of the z's that satisfies this. Does this are you following so far? Okay. Now, if you just have a look at the computer next to yours, if, you've found, if your friend has also found a point, uh, presumably it's not exactly the same point as what I've got, right? So there's a whole family of points, the locus, that will satisfy this, and we're trying to find all of them. Does that make sense? 